Just because Halloween is long over, it doesn't mean we can't continue partying with monsters. And the best parties come in game pack form. That's why I'm waving around this copy of Monster Party in case you were curious. Go grab some leftover candy because we're taking a game break. Released in 1989, Monster Party was Bandai's send-up of campy movie monsters. The game focuses on a young little leaguer by the name of Mark. On his way home from his baseball game, where I'm sure he tried his best, he happens upon a winged creature by the name of Bert. Hey Bert! As a denizen of the Dark World, Bert needs a human's help to rid his realm of evil monsters. After the two merge their bodies as not to waste any of the NES's resources, drawing unnecessary sprites, the monster hunting adventure begins. You spend most of your time playing as Mark. While he seems easily outmatched, it would seem his Louisville Slugger is capable of redirecting projectiles right back at enemies. You'll find that many of the weaker foes cannot take what they dish out, going down much quicker when they're hoist by their own petard. Mark is a rather curious boy, willing to consume any prescription medication he finds along his journey. Luckily, there's only one side effect. It transforms him into Bert. Bert has some advantages over Mark. His beams, which automatically increases in power as you progress through the game, have a much longer reach and stronger punch, making quicker work of enemies. And he can fly, so there's that. However, he cannot deflect any projectiles back at his foes, so his only defense is dodging, which is not quite as easy as it sounds. And after a few minutes, he automatically transforms back into Mark. The duo's job is to traverse through each of the eight areas of the Dark World. These levels run from a friendly-looking overworld that suddenly transforms into a hellish landscape, to underground dungeons and caves with tight corridors, a vertical tower with off-brand Jasons and literal elephant men, and even heaven. And since this is a Nintendo game from the 80s, of course it's an impossible maze level that requires you to pick the correct order of passageways with absolutely no hints or feedback as to whether you're moving towards or further away from your goal. I've always hated those. For the most part, the various platforming areas only serve as mild annoyances in between boss battles. Each area has anywhere from one to three bosses. Defeating them all, or just most of them in the case of the tower level because of a glitch, grants you a key to open the door to the next level. These bosses take on various forms from the classic, to the somewhat recognizable, to the completely kooky. Oftentimes, they'll be throwing things at you. Here, you'll want to make sure you're controlling Mark, as a well-timed swing of his bat can redirect the projectiles back at the enemies. Though there are a few times when being Bert is clearly advantageous. Your final battle pits you against the Dark World Master, itself just a giant face that shoots eyes at you. Its weak point is a third eye that emerges from its nose. Just go with it. Once you defeat it, Bert removes itself from Mark's body and bestows upon him a gift box. Emerging from this box is a princess that suddenly transforms into a monster and melts the skin off of Mark. But suddenly, Mark awakens. It was all just a weird dream. That is until Bert once again appears at the door, asking Mark if he's ready to do it again. Roll end credits and reset your NES if you want to play again, as no further button presses will register. That ending is open to some interpretation. My take? Mark is actually addicted to psychotropic pills, and the game is one long drug trip. I imagine his transformation into Bert when he consumes the pill is the instantaneous peak of his hallucinations. Everything you're seeing on screen is everyday reality seen through the eyes of Mark's drug-addled brain. Like the final battle, for example. That's just as Mark hide the batting cage. In a way, Monster Party's cautionary tale of a young boy's descent into addiction-based madness is dark and sad but also quite powerful. As for the quality of the game itself, I'm actually on the fence. The eight levels possess little real platforming challenge and minimal excitement. Meanwhile, the boss battles, the real meat of the game, aren't terribly clever. While one or two encounters require unorthodox methods to emerge victorious, like these dancing zombies, most can be defeated by volleying back some projectiles or plain old brute force. Playing through it, I find myself more interested in getting to the end as quickly as possible instead of actually taking my time to appreciate the various levels. That's never a strong indicator of quality. While I think the graphics are good and the music catchy, the overall gameplay is rather ho-hum. 
Though his overall campiness can explain some of its appeal. The enemies are definitely out there. This guy's on fire. These legs are sticking out of the ground. There are flying hands holding dynamite. This fish has lady legs. The bats are umbrellas. And trousers have minds of their own. They definitely went for inexplicably weird, and for that, it is worth a playthrough. Speaking of weird, there are two distinctly unusual things about this game. First of all, despite being published by a Japanese company, Monster Party was never released in its home country. The game that Japan would have gotten, Parody World Monster Party, got as far as the prototype stage. In 2011, that prototype was auctioned off to a Japanese collector for 483,000 yen, or around $6,000 at the time. The game data was eventually dumped and made available on the internet in 2014. What players found was similar to the final US release before all the potential copyright infringement was altered. It also contains perhaps just a hint more blood. That brings me to the second thing weird about this game. That is, the amount of content they were able to get past censors. While there were alterations, like the title screen's liquid changing from the original Blood Red to Slime Green, there was a lot of content that seems to have gone unnoticed. If you don't know or don't remember, Nintendo had some very strict content guidelines up until around the mid-90s. While it's not particularly objectionable, I did see plenty in Monster Party that should have raised an eyebrow or two. Such as the blood not coming out of only some of the background elements, but also serving as a border for the password screen. They even managed to sneak in the word hell. But mildly controversial content and drug-induced alternate reality interpretations aside, what Monster Party offers is a mixed bag of entertainment. Kinda like this leftover bag of Hershey's miniatures over here. Not enough crackle, too much special dark. This was Dave for TV Games, and as always, see you next time. Yeah, special dark. Might as well just be poison. Ugh.